third video in this mini series on composition and in this video I wanted to look at Sarah's work and the visual techniques and cues that she uses when she's composing her photographs. Now those of you that follow the channel will know that myself and Sarah shoot together a lot on the streets and even though we might be drawn to the same scene our work often shows a very different perspective. Now Sarah's image is all about the character, the scene and the way she's brought a number of elements together in the frame. We have the main guy in the foreground, his expression and body language really makes the photograph, but the background with the horse, the big guy, the woman with the buggy on the right hand side of the frame, all these different elements add up to make the image far more interesting to look at. Each element has its own place in the frame and the eye bounces back and forth between them, making it very visually stimulating to look at. Now, if you look at my interpretation of the same scene, we can see that I'm a lot closer. The composition is a lot simpler and it only has a couple of elements within the frame and it's more immediate to look at. But for me, once that immediacy is gone, Sarah's is by far the more interesting photograph overall. Now this is one of my favourite images from Sarah. It was taken in Brighton a couple of years ago and if you want to see her actually taking this image, you can do it in one of our earlier videos on the channel. This photograph features an odd number of people in the frame and as we go through this video you'll see that Sarah uses threes and fives quite a bit when she's composing. Now obviously the foreground and background placement of the figures is fantastic and we've got that wonderful decisive moment when the girl leans forward just as she's about to jump into the sea. But it's really the simplicity within the frame that allows all of that to come through visually. The whole structure of the image relies on a strong diagonal created by the girl jumping and the relationship of the other elements to that diagonal. There's a wonderful connection of the figures through their arms and legs which brings them together visually and the simple background makes sure the eye focuses on the figures. Now as you'll see with a lot of Sarah's work she uses a really deep depth of field. All of the people in the frame have a reason to be there either to support a figure in the frame or to give interest in the frame overall. What's nice about this image is the sheer simplicity of it. We have a group of three people climbing a sea wall. They're all in different positions with the young kid crouching down and any other position for her and the shot wouldn't have worked as well. We have this power of three again and this is emphasized also by the three rectangles in the wall. Compositionally, we have another diagonal and we have a good relationship of the other figures in the frame to that diagonal. And again, a simple street scene constructed with threes. The composition sits on that familiar diagonal and all the elements are being brought together through it. And again, no one person has prominence in the frame. We have a balance of three figures and this is what brings the visual interest. Not one of these girls is more important in the frame than the others. Here's another great example of giving the same amount of importance to all of the people within the frame. Compositionally, it's also fascinating to break down. We have an odd number of people in the frame, which we've talked about. The ladies to the left have some symmetry to them. They have their hands to their faces, their bags on their laps, sunglasses. And then we have another two ladies turning into each other. And again, we have that repetition of the hand on the head. And on the end, we have a fifth lady who finishes the line off. Her body position is dead ahead. Her bag is on the floor this time. And she's the only one with a hat and ice cream. Again, using a deep depth of field, Sarah's given the same importance to each of these people within the frame. And that's really the power of this particular photograph. And in this image from Brighton, we have a similar idea. The kids closest to the frame have symmetry to them. The kids in the middle are turned into each other and the kid on the end finishes the composition off. When it comes to foreground and background relationships, Sarah actively uses the background as part of the overall composition. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. This first one shot in Blackpool is effectively two images in one. We have a foreground photograph and we have a background photograph. If we take the foreground first, we can see a good triangular composition but it's really a photograph in its own right. And if we look at the background, we can see that's almost a photograph in its own right. The clever bit comes when she combines the foreground and the background together in one photograph in a split second while she's walking along the seafront. And this idea of foreground and background has been used in this photograph too, but it's the repeating pattern of shape which takes the eye through the image. It starts off with the dog and the man in the foreground and then goes through the frame to the performer in the background. 
So following on from this, Sarah has used a repeating pattern of shapes in this photograph to give the image some interest. The shapes and colours tie into the kid's bathing costume, which then emphasises her importance within the frame. Shooting into the light has made the spheres much more dramatic. And in this photograph, she's used the lines of the steps as her repeating pattern. These lines lead the eye to the three figures. But in this case, we do have a dominant figure in the foreground. Now, if you've been on the street as long as I have with Sarah, you'll know she's always drawn to eccentric characters. And in York, this lady with a dog, the way she's dressed, and the fact that the background is so very quintessentially English all make for a fantastic British scene. Now, compositionally, the yellow stripes sweep through the photograph, but it's the position of the subject using triangles and diagonals which really make the photograph for me. And in this scene in Devon, she's used a strong geometric shape as the basis for the photograph. It takes the eye through the scene and helps us to connect with the people. The limbs of the kids on the wall hold interest and the kid in the pool with those concentric circles formed by the water also hold our interest on the left of the frame. Now here she's used silhouettes because this increases the perception of shape and structure within the image. Now, Sarah isn't worried about shooting in difficult situations with difficult backgrounds. These two images are quite good examples of that. The first one, given the hot colors, given the strong light, it really shouldn't work, but she's made it work. Here we have another photograph that can be split into two parts and there's interest in both foreground and background. Sarah's used a big depth of field so that everything is in focus. We have the two figures looking in opposite directions out of the frame and both have good figure background relationships. She's managed to get the woman in white with her head against the dark background. And the same with the kid, albeit the darkness is created by the brim of his hat. The kid has a nice triangular shape, which Sarah loves to use, and there's a nice contrast in body language between the two figures. It's the same with this photograph in London. We've got a very tricky background here. There's a lot going on, lots of people in the frame, but we have a good triangular composition with the mother and the kids. And this is reflected throughout the frame with other triangles. We've also got this idea of two photographs from one image. We have the lady and her kids on the right hand side of the image and the lady walking with the flowers on the left hand side of the image. And it's Sarah's skill in bringing this together, which really makes the image work. 